Welcome to Center of Light, all my friends and family. Good to see you on this Thursday night. Am I kidding myself? No, I thought today was a day that it wasn't. I just slipped into a event horizon. I'm back though. Welcome to Center of Light. Hanging out with my friend Mary Ellen Popick in Florida. Hanging out with Mickey in Disney. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about consciousness and today's world. Should be exciting, should be enlightening should be engaging and we should all get involved into a dance just something that means something else other than the normal nine to five or whatever our daily life is a um, couple of announcements before we get down to the radio program tonight Homecoming Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. These are going to be my new adverts. It's 30 years, 30 years of my life. Blood, sweat, and tears. Just gorgeous. And to this book, World at Worldwide Distribution, John Hunt's Publishing, 6th Books Division. July 31st, 2020. It's a combination of two books and other things that bring this entire volume of unfoldment together be looking for that also next Wednesday a week from yesterday people have signed up I'm looking for it right now here we go power connection purpose course six week bust you wide open course online video form like you see now yes four models for alignment which will give you an immediate experience trust me it will give you an immediate experience you, you deserve an immediate experience to feel that you can grasp touch glimpse something that you've n never known it's just been always out of your reach I'm going to help you feel experience and be that question and answer format the whole time uh, that we do the one-on-one -on -one, the, the sessions group wise um, you can ask a question anytime when we have on, an online session but also for that six weeks something happened you want to share with me you have a quick question about something that just popped up whatever it may be send me an inbox bang bang we start talking I'm there very small fee required if you're interested Keith I am interested you need to act now Keith put it in this form Keith I'm interested or you could send me a personal inbox message but what it really requires is all of you otherwise why bother life may be busy for you you may not fit into that schedule on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock I get it I will work with you I will repost it will the information the, the videos will always be there but it's a course that only those who step into the forum of wanting to be a part of this course can have it's just the way it is I work for a living I play for a living I give lots of things are happening just look around how does it feel to be you examine yourself look closely you may see something that needs to be seen or you may see something that you never thought was possible and beautiful beautiful about yourself and when you do something about it it gets really good you know what I usually take a commercial break I don't want to do that I want to get right to my guest tonight let me tell you about my friend Marianne Popic she Mary Ellen Popic she um, put on a lot of spiritual fairs here expositions here she moved to Florida got a groove on with Mickey Mouse myself and Steve had the opportunity last year to go to Orlando and do a, a spiritual event there and it was great to see Mary Ellen and just to get away for a while let me tell you about my guest tonight Mary Ellen Poppet consciousness in today's world Mary Ellen is creator and coordinator of the sanctuary for mind body and spirit a longtime organization which serves as a platform for events resources and a new magazine that looks fantastic of course it would Mary Ellen's behind it it, it looks amazing it's exquisite for the consciousness community the sanctuary was a physical location from 2006 to 2012 in Memphis as a store and community center where Mary Ellen interacted with many authors, speakers, and teachers in the mind-body-spirit genres. 
She has many interesting stories to tell and unique perspectives on esoteric and holistic matters. You see, I don't know this part about Mary. I mean, I knew she was spiritual um, in that way, but I didn't know that she did all... I mean, I'm learning something. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Uh, Mary Ellen now lives in Orlando, Florida, and is a teacher in her own right. She has studied reincarnation with leaders in past life research and is involved with Earth Origins exploration. Her hobbies include growing and using botanicals and different techniques for health and enjoyment. As I post a link to her site, go walk all over it, into the forum, let me bring on my guest for tonight. Hi, dear. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Really, really good. Thank you. Thank good. you for joining me. I mean, I knew you you had a spiritual groove, but I didn't know you did all this. Or maybe I did and life just passed me by and I've kind of forgot about you. My apologies. Tell me all what's happening. What is this new uh, consciousness in the world or what is consciousness in today's world? What well, is that? I thought it would be interesting to talk about it with you because we we go so far back. We were just talking when I met you. Your baby was an itty bitty tiny baby. So it was 2005, I think. And that was one of my first fairs. I think it was actually my second fair. And uh, you came and you participated and you and I have known each other all this time. And what have we seen in the last 14 years? You know, how different are, is things now? What's going on in the world that's different? How is uh, how we perceive consciousness, how we perceive each other? How has that changed? even in the last 14 years. Um, it's It's been amazing. And then, you know, I've yeah. seen leaving Memphis, coming here to Orlando, and it's a little bit different, but it's the same, you know. So um, what do you think? What, are, what to you are some of the biggest differences since we met? Things are speeding up. Mm, absolutely. Th th things are really speeding up. And if you don't catch your equilibrium now, it's going to be tougher a little later. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I agree. And a lot of people don't understand that. They they feel like they're losing control or they're kind of going crazy a little bit. And I try to explain to people time is really speeding up now. And in a way, it's good because we, although we may feel like we don't have time to do all the things we want to do, we do. We'll get into that. Um, but, you know, uh, there's just so much more that we can do. I think the possibilities are are, are there more. We can create faster than ever. Um, and sometimes we experience these really cool anomalies, like, you know, the, did you just see that type of a thing? Um, because I, I don't know if you could really explain it, that the veils are thinner, um, but just, it's a different time. The energies are different, uh, you know, and, and it's not even so much, it's the planet where we are sort of in the ascension process. The earth is going through it, same as we are. Um, so that's why there's just so much cool things to talk about and, um, you know, that people are experiencing. Do you speak a lot about this out in Florida or in the region of whatever your region would be? Do you actually do this actively, Mary? Um, I, with small groups, yes. Um, and that's pretty much where it's done. And that's one of the cool things about my fair is people will come up to me and say, I don't know how you find found me. And, and fortunately, it's through social media. They, they kind of find us. We find each other. And then they find out about my events. And they'll say, I don't talk to anybody about this. I don't have any relatives that I can talk to about it. I don't have any friends that are interested in it. I'd never talk about it at work. So that's why I really um, enjoy doing the fairs and then, you know, just bringing the people together so that people can talk about it. And then they'll find out that they're not alone that there's a, you know, a whole world out there for them. And, um, and it's very exciting to them. So I really feel like that I'm doing the work in that regard and, and helping to bring people, um, you know, to the information. Maybe I don't teach it to them myself, but um, helping them to meet, you know, people like you um, who have the information. How tough is it to put on a spiritual event? <laughs> you know, it's not just making phone calls and making them, how to what comes with that really to put on a spiritual expo like you have done for years what comes with that gift what kind of the, curse the biggest thing um is the first fairs are always the hardest because you're meeting new vendors you're finding the locations, so they get easier but scouting the locations in orlando has been a bear um it's a it's a completely different world than memphis and because the tourism and everything is uh you know, the lifeblood of the city, 
Um, resorts and hotels are just <laughs> exorbitantly expensive. Um, so we've had to really work to find people that will partner with us and, and um, you know, make it so that it's even something that we can afford. I don't, I'm never going to be one of those people that charges $600 for a booth at a fair. It, it just, it blows my mind that um, some people will do that. Um, you know, because I want to make it affordable for the vendors and it's about the vendors and the practitioners and speakers and authors like you, um, you know, this is how they make their living. Um, so it's, it's making those contacts, finding the, the good vendors and, and, um, the people that the, that the attendees want to meet, um, and finding the location, it's a ton of organization. Um, that's one thing I'm learning with the bigger fair. We did a bigger fair in June and it was over 50 booths. And I learned a lot about an organization. Um, so, um, it's, it's harder than people think. Um, and there's a, you know, an investment with the money, but, um, after you've done it enough and you, you know, know the people and you know, your attendees and what people are looking for. Um, I won't say it gets easier. Um, it gets simpler, I guess. But um, each time it's like you're throwing a party and you hope people are going to come. You know that they will. But I just enjoy it so much. I, I just love it. Here's a strange question. And we don't have to stay in this arena long. Okay. <laughs> Overview. How's the politics in Florida? Is there some ease there or is there just this? What is it? I think Florida is a swing state. Um, and that really ties into what we're talking about in the consciousness. So I think that this is really a valid question. Um, Florida is a swing state. I think it can go either way. Um, <laughs> I work in a place with the Hall of Presidents <laughs> where they have to have security, uh, one or two security guards uh, at all times during the day um, because people uh, can't be trusted. Um, their people are just really so emotional on either side. Um, so I don't think Florida is really any different than any other city, really. Um, but it's it's it, what I see happening. And this was something else I try to explain to people is I really feel like that we're splitting off into different dimensions now. And I know that this is sort of like an advanced topic, but we are creating our reality so, so um, just firmly right now that I feel like that we're just splitting off. And when we split off, it's not going to be like the rapture and we're going to turn around and half of the people that we know are going to be gone. Um, I think that we are just kind of going into different dimensions or different densities. Um, I think the planet is you know, going to stay on one side and um, there's going to be sort of a similar timeline that goes the other. Again, I know that this and this is a, a, a heavy conversation, but um, actually, Mary Ellen, I think that was so brilliantly said. Mm. I hear people describe the experience that's here now and is coming exponentially mm -hmm. many different ways and you would describe it in a way that i would say that was just delicious because okay. people think what's happening we see as you said there is a, there is a split but it's not a this split or a that split and if you're in the this split and that split idea then mm -hmm. for you it is a split idea but yes. what's really happening is everybody in this splitting apart it's a unity but in this energy that's moving among itself, you're just gonna go to a frequency. Your frequency exactly. may not look like that frequency or this one. You're mm -hmm. gonna be in your own frequency and there'll be some overlapping, your friends and your tribe and all that, but mm -hmm. it's all just getting greater. Yes, that's what I tell people is whatever it is that you believe in, I don't even need to know what it is. Just keep believing it. Just keep focusing on it. Focus on what you want. Don't focus on what you don't like. It's, that's what's making all of the problems. The chaos or you know, what's perceived as chaos right now. Just keep focusing on what you want and then you're going to get more of it. And then you know, wherever we end up, that, that's going to be great. Um, but the chaos, I feel like, is just a, a side effect of this split of us creating our own realities in a bigger way than ever before. So it doesn't really scare me or concern me. Um, and it's with a lot of meditation every day. <laughs> I make sure not to let it frustrate me, um, especially because Florida is um, really being used, I think, as a platform right now. Um, so, you know, that's that's it. Just kind of need to stay the course and um, not try to overthink all of the things that are going on and just keep keep on, you know, focusing on what it is that you want to see. The darkness, you asked, we were talking earlier about what was like 
life for you and I back those years ago to now and how has it changed? At this stage of my life, the darkness is God for me. Meaning that the darkness or the chaos or the negativity, or we can even, for this instance, use the word fucking evil in the world, mm -hmm. shows me my own divinity because I know that is not me. Right. And so if that is to the extreme of not being me, it mm -hmm. shows me how me I really am. And that's what's happening to you. That's what's happening to the people in the world that are opening up to see that flower just begin to bloom. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not that, that noise in the world. That's not what I am. I, I walk on sacred ground every day. We all do. And when we see that, life just becomes divine. <laughs> Yeah. One of the things that I've gotten out of the study of reincarnation, and that's part of why I think it's so interesting um, to document some of the matches and some of the things uh, is that um, you'll see that we're repeating different cycles. In fact, there's even sort of been a study that about every 590 years, certain cycles. And if you go back and look at what happened 590 years ago, or, you know, 590 years before that, you'll kind of see repetition. But what I feel like, for example, what's going on with like ISIS or, or some of the things in the Middle East is almost identical to what happened during the Crusades to what the Christians did. The Christians did some terrible things in the name of religion. And it, it was definitely no less worse than what ISIS is experiencing. We're all mortified to see that and everything. And it may very well be that some of us actually participated in things like that in past lives, but that's how the circle of it goes. And now we're on the other side of it. And now we see this and it pains us greatly, you know, and that's kind of how karma is. Karma isn't a repayment or a, you know, a getting even it's a balancing of, of experience and energy. So we may have been responsible for creating it at one time. And now we're responsible for seeing the other side of it. You know, thank God we're not physically experiencing it. We're only seeing it on the news, but it's bad enough. So, I love the way you see things, Mary. I love your clarity, your perspective of it, really, because I understand when something bad happens in the world. There were quotes behind the word bad, around the word mm -hmm. bad. Right. It moves us all. Again, that's not what I am. That's not what we are. Compassion is a wonderful thing, but it's detached compassion that has the greatest result in making difference. The fact that what karma is, when people say, so-and-so did this to me, I hope I am there when karma pays them their visit. Mm -hmm. And I, I tell them, are you sure that karma did not pay you the same visit? <laughs> exactly. Right? And so w when we look at this and we drudge, we, dr we drudge down the years, it could have been 3,000 years ago that you and a civilization and a group of people did something. Karma does not forget. Karma is mm -hmm. your, it's the overseer of time. It, it's, it won't forget. Right. Now we can have good karma too. You know, we can have, you know, family members that we're really close to and have things that are, go really well for us. And that's, you know, so that, that's karma just as well. Um, <laughs> my mother used to tease me when I was a teenager and say, Mary Ellen, you're going to get the child you deserve one day. And I thought I was going to get just the worst behaved kid that I would, you know, I was going to have track of and everything. And then to my surprise, I got the rules police. <laughs> I got a kid who wouldn't go in the outdoor. She'd sit in the back seat and watch the speedometer, make sure I didn't speak. And that was kind of funny. That was kind of, you know, that wasn't what my mother thought was going to happen, but it was ironic nonetheless. <laughs> Mary, let me do. Let me go into a commercial break. Uh, when I do reboot your phone, your voice is getting a little squishy. Okay. And um, give it a shot. You call me back when you're. No, actually, um, I'm gonna call you back after the song. How's that? Okay. Work? Very good. Perfect. Perfect. Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchett with my friend. Wow, I'm just having a blast talking to Mary. She's out in Florida, hanging out with Mickey Mouse and Minnie, and doing the Disney thing. We didn't have the opportunity, Steve and I, um, to take her up on the tickets, whatever reasons, but doesn't mean we can't go back to the Magic Kingdom. I had a ridiculously spiritual manifestation happen, Steve and I, outside of the hotel. We saw a lady come out, turned around, 
she was gone. She was walking to a van to go to wherever. She was dressed up like she worked somewhere. I saw her get into the van, turned around, and to leave this hotel, you have to go down a very, very long drive. And this was about six o'clock, so you could see lights. The van was gone as well. <laughs> Ask Steve Lancaster, to see what he tells you. Keith Anthony Blanchard, Center of Light Radio. Join the Federation, y'all. Breathe. Take it all in. you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Let me get my guest on the phone immediately. Marianna, I'm calling you. And there she is. When technology wants to work, technology is amazing. When it yep. doesn't, it's karma. It's digital karma. <laughs> Welcome, dear. I'm glad you're here. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Mary, we're talking about, per your uh, idea for a title to the show, Consciousness in Today's World. Mm -hmm. I look out and about, and I'm seeing that which we talked about. They're taking sides there, meaning those people are just, whatever's not they're taking, they're taking sides. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so far removed from it just watch and sometimes we all do we get pulled into the current because we know god damn it what's real to me this is my precious life listen to me right but there's just this amazing tug of war happening it's not even about what side you're on what's with this now all of a sudden we can just say whatever we want and expect people to believe us and it used to be that you would hear people say things on tv or in the media or whatever and then you would decide how you thought about it. And now you have to decide if you think it's true. It's like, when did this start? You know, I, th this is where we're at in consciousness. Now, again, this is sort of like America. You know, other countries are doing their own thing. They've got their own, you know, think about how different Sweden is than America in, um, you know, where they're at, socio socio like, you know, socially. But we're a huge country. we got a lot of people and we're built on freedom and everybody wanting to express themselves and do their own thing. And so this is what it is. Social media to me, it reminds me of when um, I'm old. So I remember this. We used to cover our uh, books in school with uh, grocery, grocery bags. And then you would write on them through the year and you'd write whatever you felt like writing, whatever you felt passionate about or whoever you kind of liked or whoever you didn't like. You know, you might write stuff on it on, on, on the book. And then that's what like social media is. When you turn look at your page today, it's just like everybody's most random thoughts. And it's some really good thoughts and it's a lot of crap. And it's a lot of just, you know, I, it, it just that's something else that we're just experiencing. And I think that this is going to pass eventually, too. But we need to experience these things. So just like you, I choose to use social media and things like that for to spread light, to spread happiness. I don't want people to get on my page and hear what I hate or, you know, especially when I read some of the really div divisive, divisive things that people say. Um, so um, it, this is all just sort of a process. It's not about left and right, you know, good or bad. It, it's just there's just so much more going on. And even though it seems very chaotic. I really feel like that where we're going to end up on the other side is going to be light years away from where we were, say, six, eight years ago. Thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have a, I've been having some quonking, wonkiness going on with software, so I have to find a new way to mute. So it takes oh. me a while to engage. But okay. yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. I, I just see people going at each other because they're being spoon fed. All this ridiculous information and they're responding and it's pushing people's buttons and mm -hmm. and through all the chaos if it a person just takes a little time to use a different pair of eyes they mm -hmm. will see the quirkiness in the world and the strange wobble it has mm -hmm. and it's simply one can just step back from it just right. simply step back from it mm -hmm. that's absolutely right um, I hated that Marianne Williamson didn't do uh, or stay in a little bit more. And, and maybe she's officially still in. I'm not sure. Um, and some of the things that she said in the um, debates came off as, as pretty kooky to some people. But it made perfect sense if you could really listen to her. But, you know, but when it was framed with all of the other um, political, uh, you know, positioning that was going on around her, it, it, you know, it did come off a little bit um, more esoteric than I think people were ready to listen for at the time, but that's why I give her credit. She was a, you know, a grass dancer, as they call. She kind of got in there and sets the groundwork, hopefully for more people like her to, or she'll show up again at another time. I absolutely agree. I loved her. I loved her books. 
I love her empowerment. I love her teachings. I love her position. She she has one hell of a consciousness on her. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking about consciousness in today's world, she is a seed planter. She went in there and she threw some ideas around, and they they chose whoever that they are. And this is not even a point and finger. Just they as a plural. Many people saw her as woohoo. She affected them because they're not used to such a place that they would choose the word as woohoo to right. deem her platform. What else can they, they're not familiar with that kind of thing. So to me, that's a little. Yeah. One time, several years ago, I posed a question on my Facebook page and I asked people, because remember, I've got people on there I went to high school with, I've got family members. Um, I've got people from the sanctuary. I've got people that I work with and, you know, all kinds of people that I are on my friends list. And I said, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? And I was really shocked at how many people thought they needed to be right. And, I, you know, I don't get it. But In fact, I think spiritual expansion and productivity will never happen until a person begins to see how wrong they are about it everything because if you were right about everything we would be in that place they call enlightened so the spiritual process is really about seeing how wrong you've been about everything from the moment you awake and you actually gradually right yourself from all the wrong that you've been perfect i mean wouldn't you agree mary that if yeah the spiritual awakening is truly realizing how wrong you are about everything and slowly start to wake up from the dream. It is. And <laughs> a lot of people confuse spirituality with religion. And, you know, that's not what it is. Religion is a set of, um, you know, it's dogma, it's it's rules, it's a, you know, a sp specific path. Whereas spirituality to me is where I am in the universe, you know, how I relate to, you know, a bigger picture. Um, so uh, when people start to just even get an inkling of wanting to know more and thinking, and, and I've always, I grew up Catholic and I knew from a very young age, that there was more than what my religion taught me. And I did not feel that I was um, being disloyal to my religion to pursue outside of that, to, you know, um, some of the things about psychics where some religion thinks psychic readers are evil. You know, there's prophets that they talked about in the Bible and seers and things like that. And, and I didn't have a problem with it and, and I explored it. But once you just kind of open the door to that and then it's just like there's just so many more things to explore. And then that's when you start to peel back the layers like an onion. And then and part of that is the self, um, you know, and, uh, you know, going within and, and looking. And uh, once you get to a certain point, then you think about everything you've always thought. And then you kind of look at things with a fresh set of eyes and, um, you know, you might see things completely different than you did. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's it's definitely, you know, it's it's sometimes it's painful, but it's beautiful. And it's just it's in a constant progress and, and it's it's awesome. There's just so much to know. If someone told me, of course, this is after many years of study, but typically be, me being me, if someone said, Keith, if I could promise you that you might have an experience that would feel like this to you. But you have to follow my lead. Would you do it? I said, well, absolutely. You know, if someone says they saw something phenomenal under a rock yesterday, something spiritual, I'm not going to go look just to disprove. I'm going to go look because I want some of that magic. You know what I'm saying? Right. But today, it's like, Mary, people, it's like they, it's not that they don't want it. Why wouldn't anyone want that? What is the resistance? What is the hesitation? What are they so scared of that is in there? Or what kind of trouble they might be in? That has to be what's stifling many, many people, at least in this part of the country, from allowing themselves to explain. A lot of it is the religion. And we're taught, you know, in the Catholic Church, we're taught that we're going to not only go to hell, you know, or even if we don't go to hell, we're going to spend all of this time in purgatory down to how many days, depending on how many sins you cast. And it's a scary thing. And I think that we do kind of unlearn a lot of that doctrine. And I don't want a bad mouth religion. Um, I think churches really do serve a good purpose. But um, remember that a lot of the churches, you know, came around medieval times or, you know, right after that, or maybe even a little bit before I'm thinking like around the year a thousand. 
And it was more about power and control. If you wanted to hear the news of what was going on and with the church or with, um, uh, you know, leaders or even just like with the food rations and stuff like that, you'd need to go to church and everything uh, kind of went through there. So Keith, you disappeared. So I may be talking here by myself. There you are. <laughs> no, no I, was, I was giving you the, the spotlight, Chick. I was letting you rock the house. <laughs> Welcome to Center of Light Radio. I'm going to post your website and contact. No, I didn't. I'm not. Uh, I have something else in my clipboard. I'm going to get to that shortly. So Mary and I are old friends. Uh, old meaning yeah, don't throw years. That we, yeah, we're not, we're not going to use that word. Mary and I are really good friends. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We've been knowing each other for a while. Um, we always seem to bump into each other, which is a, a self-giving time. I need something from her. She needs something from me, and it supplies other people. Would that be a true statement, dear? I think so, and I love watching the trajectory that you're on. You know, I just think that it's really cool. Um, this radio show, um, I know, reaches a lot of people. Um, your book, it was awesome. I think... I might have even seen your book before I met you. When did that come out, The Divine Principle? It started in 1996. Yeah. It came out a couple, it came out about 2000, after 2000, say 2006. It was kind of a touch and go thing. Mm -hmm. Gave it a new cover, pushed really hard, it became bestseller. Mm -hmm. So that would be 2000, the, the bestseller moment. So when the book came out would be 2010. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I had seen your book before then, but you know, as a musician, I think you're great. So that I watched that whole video that you played there on the break. I've always loved, uh, was that Lavender Soul? Is that okay? A reincarnation yeah, of Lavender yeah, Soul, yeah. which I love. I just think you guys are great. So, um, you know, I'm really glad that we keep in touch and everything. You were really well received at Spirit Fest down here. Um, Steve too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Steve, um, he's, he's the preacher in him just never leaves and, and it just changed direction. And, you know, remember he was a, uh, he was a conservative minister. What was it? Um, he's a charismatic, ch charismatic minister. He, yeah. for 25 years, he created his own church called the happy church. Listen to this. He had a church called the happy church and he's a good looking man and he's got a swag about him and and he did the Bible thing in a beautiful way and do whatever reasons one day. And he got a lot of flack for his church called the Happy Church. Mm -hmm. um, but one day he just, on the pulpit, if I'm paraphrasing correctly, forgive me, Steve, just mm -hmm. said, I can't do this anymore. And, but the, you're right, the preacher is who, he's the dancing, he's the dancing preacher. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I'm hoping that you're going to come back and, and do a workshop down here. Um, so, you know, we'll put that on the docket for next year. Well, what's, what's coming up in the Florida future in the, in the way of? We have just next weekend, we have Spirit Fest. Um, uh, what is it? The 16th and 17th. Uh, so it's it's an, uh, what just like eight nine, or nine days away. Um, and that's going to kind of round out the fall. We've got excellent speakers again uh conference worthy speakers for this event um and anybody who's interested if you're in the orlando area and you know sometimes people are coming through i've had people come that are on vacation that, that came from other states that had heard about it excuse me and came through so um you can go to the website it's you posted it early on but it's sanctuary fl like florida sanctuaryfl.com um to find out more about what's going on the big thing I'm super excited about, we've got other Spirit Fests. They're all going to be bigger um, next year. They're all going to be at least, well, around 50 booths, I think, in different cities in Central Florida. But in January, uh, I think this the 18th and 19th, uh, Ancient Aliens uh, History Channel. We've got uh, Clifford Mahuti from Ancient Aliens coming in and a bunch of other really top-notch speakers um, in Cocoa Beach. And it's an easy drive for people. You could even come from Tampa or Jacksonville and just do one day. You could do both. The hotel is giving us a really great rate and it's on the beach. So um, I'm really excited about that. And that's an Earth Origins. Um, that's something I've done a lot of research with. We're right here in Florida, right off the coast of where I believe Atlantis was. Well, still is. It's just sunk. Um, and which depending on, you know, how the oceans are going and with all the melting and things like that, we may end up seeing, um, that's a whole nother conversation. I could talk a lot about that. I've done a lot of research on Atlantis here. So, 
Um, I just think there's a lot to explore when we realize where we came from, how we got here. We can kind of see a little bit better where we might be going. So, so um, what do you think that is? Just and you, it, use your intuition, the, your level of sight, just an honor if you if you care to. Where do you think, as a collective, we're the, we're going to reach? What do you think? What do you think? What's what is going to look like? Back to that metaphor about us splitting off, and enough people are getting to a higher level. I think that we are creating other realities. It's not new. Um, what's new is it's sort of like the Earth as a whole. Um, I think people are going to stay in 3D. Other people are going into 5D. Um, I think it's happening now. Even back when I had the sanctuary, I used to hear stories and, oh, my goodness, I'm hearing so many more now. But they'd come in and they'd buy something at the store. And usually it was something meaningful um, for their spiritual practice, whether it was a CD or um, jewelry or crystals, big on crystals. And they say that they would go home and set the bag on the counter and then they'd go to get it and it wouldn't be there. And then they couldn't find it. And then three or four days later, they'd go in the kitchen and it would be on the counter. I hear that all the time. And um, I'm hearing that from a lot of people now, too, that stuff, they lose stuff and, it's, you know, it's not there or, you know, they get someplace and it seems like there was no time at all or, or two or three hours passed when it should have been 10 minutes. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think that it's anything super weird or scary. I just think it's a side effect of, of sort of this dimensional thing. Um, so... That's what I think. I think that we're just going to be going to a higher rate collectively, um, those who choose to do that. Um, and then that's what Atlantis was in the very beginning. It was a much, um, we weren't in physical form. We were um, in more in a spirit form. And then we wanted to have this experience. And now there's Lemuria too, but I'm speaking specifically about Atlantis. But, um, you know, as then we started to kind of, uh, want more control and, um, you know, control over what we're created and things like that. We kind of went down in density, but this was sort of planned. Um, you know, there, there was a lot more to it. And then now we've kind of gotten where we are. And I think that kind of the cycle's going the other way. I think that now we're going back up. The earth is going to a higher vibration, but we're helping to create that. So, um, like I said, even though it seems it's really chaotic in the United States right now, I think that what it is is just um, the basis of a foundation for some new thinking. Have you heard in the um, the news about some of the millennials calling out boomers like it's a bad thing? I have not. Enlighten me. <laughs> Enlighten me. Yeah. They think uh, it was a gal, um, a young lady that was speaking about climate change. And then somebody was heckling her who was a little bit older than us. And um, basically, she told him he was a boomer and didn't know what he was talking about. And he needed to be quiet. And she feels so passionate that the young the young people feel like that the older generations are not paying attention. And, and again, they're so interested in the economy and the old ways of thinking. They've got to wake up to the new ways of thinking. And I love that. I just love that that's going on right now. That's what the children are here to do. They're here to usher in a new level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You should be. You have to be childlike to enter, and a little child shall lead them. Mm -hmm. Why are children being targeted? And all this time when we were kids, we never thought for once that so much of this craziness in the world would be surrounded by Mm -hmm. children why because the all the forces in the universe that are trying to learn from each other and try up whatever the dynamic that works best in your head as a model mm -hmm. children why did they why did they uh murder children in the time of moses the, the 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 boys and in the time of jesus because children are always the leaders because they're in their innocence and their awe and their wonderment when you say so, that they're going yeah. to be the teachers of our future? Definitely. And I do think, and this started back with the crystal children that they kind of identified, um, that they're coming in with just a new sense of knowing. Um, and again, this is planned. I think we stood in line to get here, to this planet. I you actually know? agree. Yeah. People talk about, oh, this is so hard, and, you know, and I, this is, you know, just, but I really think that we wanted to be here now. Um, you know, just to kind of see this change take place. It's really an exciting time. So they come in and they they don't want to, they just want to break down the social mores and they don't care about how it was done in the past. They just want to do new. And then there's, you know, people of older generations who um, may not quite be as esoteric or open-minded 
Um, and again, into the money, into the power, into the control, into right and wrong, black and white. They they don't want to get outside of that. And um, it's it's going to die out, unfortunately, unfortunately for them, if they think that it's not going to happen. Um, the new ways are, are coming and we can see it in the politics now. And um, it, it's just exciting. I absolutely I, I totally, absolutely agree. <laughs> Who knows, these kids could be in wait. They could be in a queue themselves, and they're quiet right now, right? Mm -hmm. And don't, don't kid yourself for a moment that many of these children, the children of light is the umbrella, which under is the indigo children, the crystal children, the rainbow children. Now they're supposed to be like a, a, a diamond, whatever. So mm -hmm. all these different ways, but yet overall the children of light. And they're supposedly on, in rest in a waiting period. Mm -hmm. And that they run with the entire pack of children so that the children of lights can be somewhat camouflaged. They're normal kids, but you can't distinguish them from kids. So that helps them to be hidden from the wolves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think there's, there's, you know, there are children in South America that are bending spoons and moving objects. But mm -hmm. I, I totally agree, Mary. I think there's a time that's coming slash probably here now where things are going to start shifting really hard. Mm -hmm. And children are going to be leading the way. But... I think there's a lot of stuff happening surrounding children that's pointing to us. What are we going to do about the importance of our children? If yeah. They're being threatened. Agreed. And we, the planet, um, you know, it is something that we need to pay really, especially being in Florida um, with all the water around us and, and how the heat is affecting us here. Um, it needs to be something that we're super concerned about. And it just pains me um, to think that um, some people just don't, we're not allowed to say climate change. <laughs> it's just, that just doesn't make any sense to me. But you talked about South America, about um, kids that are able to do things. They are a lot more open in talking about that there than they will here. And I don't know if it has to do with the media and they're just afraid to get into the woo or really what. But also in South America, I have heard stories from super reliable sources that UFOs or spacecraft are landing there, beings are getting out and just walking up to the, the people will come up and they'll talk. And it's because there's a heart connection. And they won't do that here because A, there's not a heart connection. Everybody's, you know, they're just going to have their phone out and want to be filming it, you know, um, instead of being interested in what's going on or B, they're going to get shot. So that's another thing too, that I'm, I'm really interested to see kind of how that's going to play. Um, I think when we see a spacecraft in the sky or, or somebody sees one and you think, oh, what is it? I, I'm more interested in who's flying it, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I I another thing I totally agree. Everybody's like, wow, I saw a UFO last night. Nobody ever stopped to think about the pilots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. We saw them. Did they see us? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I think I'm hoping that eventually – my feeling is, is within within five years uh, time that it's going to start to be a little bit more well known here in the United States. But imagine when it's common knowledge that there's beings from other planets that we now need to get along with, not just our neighbors or um, people in other countries. We're now, taking it to the galactic level yeah, is what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. Heaven yeah. on Earth. We're going into the divine through the via the cosmos, via, uh, via our other terrestrial brothers and sisters that don't do things like we do and we don't do things like they do and we got to start getting along <laughs> yes absolutely so that'll be an interesting thing and yeah, the I love consciousness it. of that has changed too but you know that the whole fake stuff has gotten out of control in the ufo community too um you know people saying other people made stuff up or youtube oh my goodness there is so much fake stuff on youtube because people just want to get the clicks and they'll make all of this stuff the majority of the UFO stuff, I think is not, you know, so that's why it's good to, to re, you know, research and really find the good sources. Um, people who are into exopolitics, people who were in the government who are speaking out now, there's a lot of them out there. If you go research that too. Um, and I think that that's going to just kind of bring us a whole level, new level of consciousness from a different direction too. Somebody's got a smoking gun somewhere. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> when that person steps up and is secure and they know how they're so smart, they know that they're basically invincible. And they divulge some information from a source that is so pure. I mean, it, mm -hmm. 
Even the beauty of something being revealed that is so liberating will scare the bejesus out of many, many people. And they're going to call it something it isn't. Mm -hmm. That's what I see as a possibility. Dear Lord, I pray in this moment to surround me and the earth with light that nothing, such a ridiculous thing ever happens. Seriously, right. I meant that shit. <laughs> but I'm overwhelmed by being here. I love it. It's gorgeous. I'm not complaining mm -hmm. at all. I just see other people that somehow, even indirectly and un unconsciously ask, I'm lost. I need help. And when help is given, they just don't care. They just, you throw them a life preserve in a swimming pool and they'll shoot you the middle finger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. It it's, hurts. It yeah. hurts because I am plugged in, just like you. I'm plugged into the world. Mm -hmm. It's different than it was. But, you know, that is part of what the time that we've been here makes us wiser. But then we also have a, a wider thing for comparison. So it might make things seem more extreme than they are now. Whereas the kids who are, um, you know, look at your son's age. You know, this is pretty much their world. This is really all that they've known. So it might not seem quite so chaotic and ridiculous. <laughs> you know what just came to me? Thank you for this, the energy hit. What you said triggered a, a push in me. What's happening in the form of the system, the infrastructure, be it religion, political, and all these different areas of the world are breaking down. It's because no longer the world no longer belongs to the adults. Yeah. It's not there. Yeah. They're losing grip and they... The collective unconsciousness of it knows it's losing grip and it does not like it so much. So it's creating this uprising and all this rift and chaos and mm -hmm. and there's nothing we can do about it. The momentum's too strong. That's what's happening with the dark as well. Those of us who are sensitive to that type of energy, um, you know, um, matters that want to come in, um, discarnate things, um, if you're sensitive to that. They know that they're losing their grip and then they're coming in and they're just holding on with the, every fiber of their being. And we're just, you know, um, they know that they're losing. So that's why, again, that even seems harsher to, um, you know, people that are sensitive to it. Lincoln has a very good question. Hello, everyone. Um, I've just been engaged with my beautiful guests having fun. So hello, I'm saying hi to you collectively. I appreciate you. My guest tonight is Mary Ellen Popic in Florida. Orlando, and we're speaking about consciousness in today's world. Lincoln asked the question, I heard we are all given the choice to ascend or stay in 3D about a year ago. I'm wondering what Mary Ellen thinks about that. I think that we have the choice all the time, really. Um, and it just goes with where we want to be and where you want to stay spiritually. Um, Sometimes when we get really into a spiritual zone and things like that, things seem to fall away. And, but what we don't realize at the time is often it's going to replace with something better than we had even dreamed of. So you might lose a job or you might lose a relationship um, or things like that. And you're going to hear some booms. The Disney fireworks are going off here. So just letting you know if you hear them. Um, so um, I think that if we can just stay out of that, if you stay out of the fear and stay focused on where you are, you're automatically going to ascend. And you may even be going back and forth now. But I don't think that there was a hard, like a door that you were going to enter that you could have missed. Um, you're never going to miss that that opportunity. Um, and, it's, and it's not even, I think that we may be going back and forth all the time. So, um, you know, that's, that's a lot of exciting things to, to look forward to. So that's Disney World fireworks going off behind you yeah i live about a mile <laughs> from cinderella's castle yep. wow yeah oh, i left right. memphis and i and i ended up here i don't know how it happened um but it's it's just been such a blessing i just love it i love it here um Mary, so i we, do work there during the day and then um i'm blessed enough to have the opportunity to do some of these other things that i enjoy in the evenings and on the weekend do you push a 40 hour week is that what I you do, do? I do. Yeah. Yeah. You like it okay? You do you? It's really fun there. It's it's hard fun, I think they call it. Um, but it 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 really is. And you know, I think Walt Disney was magic. I think cuz that's what Disney's about. You create magic every day. Um, so um, yeah, it's 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 I'm very blessed. I definitely am very blessed to be here. I miss that, but I don't miss the cold. <laughs> 
I'm not a cold guy. I like I like it snugly. Everybody, we're going to go to our final segment. We're going to take a short commercial pause tonight. My beautiful friend, Mary Ellen Poppick. I'm having fun, dear. I'm just enjoying it. we got one more segment. You good for about another 15 minutes? Yes, I am. Fantastic. Let's see what we're going to play. You have a Lavender Soul song that you remember that you would like to hear, if I can call it up? I don't remember the names, but there were so many good songs on there. Do you like ballads or you like a little movement? Um, what's the most spiritual song on the album? It depends what we call spiritual in the form of awakening type of thing mm -hmm. or just a beautiful, uh, an awakening, let me, an awakening, a one-on-one -on -one awakening. I'm looking for the title. I got it in my head. See you shortly. Welcome back to Center of Light Radio. Mary, I'm here. And, oh, that's fireworks. I think I'm thinking you're popping your knee in the bottom of your desk. <laughs> Mary, yeah. that song was called Perfect in Every Way. I want to go over something with you. The, the chorus, on the chorus, the lyrics are, Let the love of God fall upon you. It's always been that way. Time to celebrate who you are, perfect in every way. 
So it's about getting out of all the noise, the redonkulous. Just simply open up and let it just drape you like a cloak, right? Mm -hmm. People think love is an, an action. I love you. And if I only if I loved you or if you loved me, that's not what it is at all. It's just this. It's a way of seeing and being and freeing yourself beyond anything that's difficult and causes you trouble mental self-induced anguish it's stopping everything and just existing in nothing kind of yes mm -hmm. we are all god and just as if you went to the ocean and you took a glass and you scooped up a glass of the ocean of water of the ocean water and you set it on the table that glass is no less the ocean and that's what we are. We are all God, you know, in our own aspects. And when we can just get out of the noise and just silence our mind, even for just a few minutes in meditation or whatever it is that we can do, it's so easy to remember that and you, you know, to feel that divine connection. And you know that we're not this world. We're not even our own, the thoughts, the, the monkey chatter that gets in there. We are God, we are the universe. And and in that revelation along comes reverence, respect mm -hmm. for others, kindness, non-judgment, mm -hmm. unity. It naturally just heals itself by making the internal shift, doesn't it? Not just, you know, if it's versus all this, you know, it's me, it's just me. And I need to let everything be as it is because it's beautiful. Who am I? Mm -hmm. I just need to fall into that space of observation as creator is forever and be in that place and things just take take over and you ride the current consciously and today's consciousness in this world begins to shift and as many teachers Mary myself many others even many of you we need to spread the torch the divine torch is a lot lighter than the burden of ignorance pain and fear mm -hmm. right on <laughs> what are your final thoughts dear would you like to leave us with so we can meditate tonight and tomorrow throughout the week um, somebody mentioned Atlantis, and I did kind of want to say one last thing about Atlantis um, with regard to, to reincarnation. Um, a lot of the stories, and Edgar Casey will say this as well, um, that we had a certain level of technology in Atlantis, far beyond what we um, could do here. A lot of it was with crystals and the fractals of the crystals we could make. We made them into lasers and things like that. And then uh, one of the major destructions in Atlantis was because of the misuse of the technology. And it was about power and control. And we couldn't get along and then basically blew up um, and broke apart a large part of the continent. And I really feel like what's going on in the United States right now is sort of a replay of that karma that we chose to be here now. A lot of us that were there in Atlantis to be in the United States now. And a lot of the players are the same people that you might see in politics, that you might see on TV people we might work with, we live with neighbors and things like that. Kind of think about that and just see if that resonates with you at all. Um, and what we would do if we were back in Atlantis, you know, um, tens of thousands of years ago, what would we have done to try to make things better? What can we do to make the world better right now? Shine your light. Don't hide it under a bushel basket, like they say in the Bible. Um, you know, be the light um, and just keep on keeping on. So that would that would be my final thought. Now that I know this other side of you, all this Atlanta stuff, let's dive in. Let's have you back in the near future. We'll just find okay. another space in the calendar and I'll do my homework and okay. do my intuition and we'll just get at it and play some conversational ping pong. Oh, I would love to. I've got a lot of information. Everyone say your hellos and goodbyes to Miss Marianne Popic. I've been posting and I will do it again. Her website and contact and everything she is and does. Just now, Mary, thank you again, sweetheart. I look forward to seeing you soon. Have fun right, at, your, again for your, at, at your spiritual event. Have a blast. Yeah. All right. Take care. Peace, love. Great job. Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchard here, Center of Light Radio. Going to go hang out with my boy. Watch a movie. Y'all hear those Disney fireworks in the background? Isn't that cool? <laughs> Are you celebrating your life? Is your life filled with big bangs? The creation of the universe? Is there a new you in there waiting to explode and be born? Dear Lord. I sit in that chair every day and pray. Dear Lord, open me up. Where's my exit screen? Right there. See you soon. Peace, love, and light.
inside.